Hey, don't go away. I'll be right down there. Hey, how's it going? I'm Tom Haig, and I'm going to make it really easy for you guys to make a decision on who to hire for your anchor person for your outdoor adventure show. Um, I'm a recent graduate from the Edward R. Murrow School of Communications from Washington State University. I'm a broadcast news major and I saw your ad on Craigslist and I was like I've got to do this. This is right up my alley. Um, although I'm a recent graduate I'm hardly 23 years old. I've actually been doing I've been a professional athlete for several years and I worked in the sporting goods industry for a long time. Met most mostly for Adidas, before I decided to go into broadcasting. Um, what I did as a professional athlete actually lends really well to this project. I was a professional high diver. And uh, in college, my first run of college, I was a uh, psychology major at the University of Illinois. And upon graduating from Illinois, I was on their springboard and tower diving team. I was hired by Worldwide Productions out of Hong Kong, and I was uh, uh, hired to jump off of 70-foot towers and do this on fire. Um, it was very scary to do at first because the highest I had ever dove off of was a 33-foot or a 10-meter tower. But uh, I saw pe people that I thought were not quite as good uh, divers as I was, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this. And uh, so my first job was uh, in Hong Kong. I got there and uh, flew all night long and I had to work the very next day. So got up jet lagging. Ended up doing some of the simplest dives I've ever done in my life. And ended up doing it flat on my belly to a crowd of about 3,000 screaming Chinese kids who really thought it was just great that this American guy was landing flat on his belly. And, and uh, from there I moved on on to uh, Taiwan, and I worked in Taiwan for four months, and upon that, I was deciding to go back to school or not, and, and they gave me another contract, and this time it was in Holland, and it was a six-week contract in Holland, and I didn't come back for 16 months. I went for uh, to work, work in the Dolphinarium Hardwijk, doing the same things, about a 70-foot dive and doing a fire dive and uh, doing a lot of comedy and actually would we would uh, be the presenters for our own show too a team of about six people and after my six weeks in holland i decided i wanted to stay on in holland for a while i traveled all over europe i then got a job in the middle east so i ended up working in abu dhabi in dubai for four months after that i came back i worked in northern germany for a month and then after that, I moved to Les Avignons, France, which is in the foothills of the French Alps. And I stayed there for the next four years. Uh, I started becoming a cyclist. They had an amusement park we could work in. And I really wanted to learn how to speak French. So while doing the show, um, I decided that I wasn't going to leave that town unless I could speak French. So I just kept on working at it and working at it. And maintenant, je suis... Je parle couramment français et de temps en temps, j'ai fait le présentateur dans le spectacle de plongeon acrobatique. So what I just said there is, so I stayed there until I could speak French fluently, and which obviously I'm more fluent French than I'm in English. But uh, I just decided that if I was going to live with these people, I didn't want to keep traveling unless I could settle down in one place and really get to understand them. So I did, and I stayed there for the next four years until I moved back to America. And upon moving back to America, I was hired by Adidas uh, in Portland, Oregon, to work their uh, to work their events. And the first event I worked was the World Cup in 1994, and traveled all over the country, just setting up booths and tents to sell Adidas footwear out of. And we had a little Adidas museum and things like that. And we also dealt with all the athletes. We'd have to give them their shoes, give them their uh, whatever they needed as these athletes were coming in. Um, and then I stayed on with Adidas for the next couple years until evidently I 
broke my back. And I broke my back mountain biking. I was uh, been a very avid cyclist my whole life. I still am. And uh, I was riding to uh, go on a long ride in Portland. And uh, I ran into a truck. And I broke my back. And, and I spent, obviously, the next year recuperating. Uh, just trying to put my head back together. And when I, once I was done with that, Adidas hired me back again. And I worked at Adidas for the next two years writing and producing their internal uh, tabloid newspaper called La Didas. And it was a fantastic job. And it was just, uh, it was so fantastic that eventually the headquarters in Germany decided that uh, we were doing too good of a job and they took the whole department over to Germany and did it all with Germans as opposed to us in America. So then I'm left without a job again and it was at the internet boom and uh, I had become a very good internet programmer at this point too and my brother is uh, of all things, he is the webmaster for the Dalai Lama and he was living in Dharamsala in northern India and since I was uh, out of jail Job, I just decided, hey, I'm going to go over there. So in my wheelchair, I packed up a bunch of stuff, a bunch of goods that would help me, and uh, I moved to Dharamsala. So I lived in northern India for the next five months, uh, rolling around, you know, in the Himalayas in a wheelchair. So it was really exciting. Um, there was a couple of treacherous spots I got myself into, not so much because of uh, steep hills and stuff, but because of rain, because of was there during uh, monsoon season and it was just it was pretty funny because they'd never seen anyone in a wheelchair up there in Dharam slots way high up in the uh, in the Himalayas got to meet the Dalai Lama actually accused the Dalai Lama of a human rights abuse because he had a guy in a wheelchair in his monastery who was being warehoused he was up two, two stories up and he never got out and uh, the Dalai Lama did go eventually find this monk in his monastery and got him down onto a bottom floor so he could get out and move around. Um, so it came back to America eventually and I uh, went back and I, I operated a web business for a while until finally I just decided that uh, I wanted to get, get back into the sports business and that drove me into the media business and that's when I went and applied to uh, go back to school at Washington State, went to the Murrow School, it's the best school in the West Coast for broadcast news, had some incredible teachers, they taught me how to do everything, and now I'm ready to get out and work, and I saw your ad in Craigslist, and I think it's the best opportunity for me. As far as working with animals, I can say I've traveled to, I've been to 28 of America's national parks, a bunch of national parks all around the world, and I've come across... Uh, some bears and I've come across animals and I think the smartest thing anyone can say about coming across animals in the wild is you're on their, their territory so unless you're with some expert that knows what's coming that's happening you have no business dealing with those animals so with experts sure you've got to you know you're in great shape but obviously you got to give animals their justice because it's their place so I think one of the last things you said is, I wanted to know is what is the bravest thing I've ever done? And I can tell you, I've uh, I've dove off, I've done the Acapulco cliff diving contest. I have dropped on my bike at 65 miles an hour down some pretty gnarly mountain passes. I've mountain biked, you know, looking over a curb that, or a, a drop off that, you know, it's a 200 foot drop, stuff like that. But that's not the bravest thing I've ever done. The bravest thing I've ever done is getting out of the hospital and being in the throes of depression and just deciding that I didn't want that depression to control me. So the bravest thing I've ever done is just to, about four months after I was in a wheelchair, to decide that I wanted to live. Because at that point, I didn't really want to. And now I do. And you can see I've got a joy for life. And I think it's just it's going to be perfect for your show. So, that's me. And I think uh, I think what you guys need to do is you guys need to be brave. Be groundbreaking thing to have a guy in a wheelchair do your show.
Oh, and obviously I can speak. I'm very well rounded, and I think it'd be a big plus for you guys. So, balls in your court, you guys. Good luck.